Look at my outfit. It looks really good. I have an evil twin behind me. I don't know why it did that. A really important thing for any desk setup is having really cool lighting. We need some sort of distraction for everybody. Anything new on YouTube? Hi, I'm Sarah. For those who are new here, I'm a software engineer in Vancouver, and today you're gonna code with me. All right, so I just got back from work and it's almost 8 p.m., so I wanna work on my outfit generator app and I wanna put out some new features, fix some bugs, all before my favorite cafe closes. All right, so I wrote out a little to-do list of all the features I wanna add. First, I'm gonna fix some bugs. Then I'm gonna implement feature one, which is to save the IDs of the already generated outfit. Feature two, which is to add a liked outfits gallery. Feature three, which is to add a way to try on online clothes. And because my repo is public, I wanna review other people's code reviews because I got a few of those. I realized last night that at this rate, I will never finish all the work I have to do. What work? What work? What work, she asks. This all started because I wanted to find a way to try on all the clothes in my closet without making a big mess for my room. The idea is pretty simple. I want my tops and bottoms for my actual closet to be displayed one at a time. And when you hit the wear button, those clothes should appear on my body so you can try on your clothes digitally. At first, when I was trying on the clothes, I would just layer the clothing images over a picture of myself, but it didn't look very good. It looked pretty awkward and I couldn't even tell if it was a good outfit or not. So I decided that I wanna use AI to make this outfit change look a lot more seamless. So let's begin. Right now, I only have like these stock images. This is a really bad picture of me. There's like branches in the back. And also these pictures are from like Abercrombie. This is what it would look like if I didn't use AI. It would just be a shirt, pants, pasted on an image of myself. This is what it looks like with Nano Banana. It actually looks like I'm wearing the clothes. It even has wrinkles that makes it look really natural. And the pants even go over the shoes, which is pretty insane. So let's go over what I've already done. I can add tops and bottoms and it will generate these two clothing items on my body over here. Look at my outfit, it looks really good. I also have this feature which is Nano Bananafy and then you can show you like first day of work. Okay, first day of work, style me. And then, oh my goodness. Well, it gave me a very interesting work outfit. I would never wear that because that's not what you wear in tech, but maybe I should have been more specific. Sometimes I see cute outfits on Instagram or Pinterest and I wanna see if it would actually look good on me. For that, I added the outfit transfer button. When you click it, I coded a pop-up to appear so you can upload a reference photo from your files. So it's basically transferring the outfit from someone else's photo onto me. I've been playing around with this button a little bit and I noticed that it can have a hard time picking up the outfit. So I like to use a photo that is only of the outfit and doesn't have a face in it or it can be confusing for the AI. So this outfit transfer button, you can select an inspiration picture of a really cool outfit and hopefully it will place it on me. So let's see. Oh, it didn't work. I probably need to fix something for that because I don't know why it didn't work. It just put myself again. So little update, I'm trying to fix the outfit transfer button, which wasn't working initially in my demo. And right now it's doing something super weird. Let me show you. Right now, this is what happened. So I found a cute little outfit off of Pinterest. I really like this brown and the striped scarf. And then I press transfer and look at what it does. I have an evil twin behind me. I don't know why it did that. I did not change my prompt at all. The funny thing with working with AI, it's almost like a black box. You don't really know what's going on on behind the scenes, especially because I didn't create the model either. Like, I don't know what they're doing. So as you can see, there are a few bugs with my outfit generator app. It doesn't do the outfit translator app very well, and sometimes it just doesn't do it at all. I got comments saying that I should add a save ID so I can save the outfits that I've already generated with Nano Banana so I don't have to generate it again. So I'm thinking of adding a gallery where I can go back, like pictures, and save all my favorite outfits that I generated. So 
here's how I set up my database with Supabase. Supabase is basically a service that gives you a real database in the cloud. Inside a database, you can have things like tables, which work kind of like spreadsheets. Each table has columns that describe the type of information you want to save. In my app, I already have a table called clothing item, which is where I keep all the individual pieces of clothing. For this new feature, I'm adding another table called Generated Outfits. When I save an outfit, that image gets uploaded into storage. If you want to help me design new features for the app or play around with it, I have posted all the code for this project in a public GitHub repo, which is linked in my description. Alright, so before I push my new changes, I want to check if anybody else has made a pull request because I made this repo public so anybody can contribute to it. All you have to do is fork the repo, make your changes, and I'll be reviewing your code using Graphite, who I'm partnering with for this video. They gave me access to their platform to try it out and it's honestly made this whole code review process way smoother. Graphite is a tool built right on top of GitHub. It makes collaboration and reviews a lot faster. For example, I can open up their built-in AI chat and literally ask things like, is this code safe to merge and what improvements can I make. It gives you smart suggestions to help you catch issues early on and clean up your code before you merge. Instead of making one huge pull request, I use a Graphite CLI to break down my code into smaller stackable ones. And using these stack PRs is exactly how engineers at big companies like Google, Meta, and Airbnb collaborate on big projects. So if you want to try it out or contribute to my project, check out the repo and Graphite link in the description. So quick update, I actually finished implementing the first feature. This feature was to be able to save the outfit combination so I don't have to send the API call again to generate the AI images. I've actually set up my database with Supabase. All I did was ask Cursor to give me an SQL command which would modify the table so to add a few more columns. I ran that in the SQL query editor and then it added some more columns to the table. Let's say I generate a new outfit like this brown shirt and this skirt and we select it. This is the first time it's generating, that's why there's a loading screen. Okay, so that's my outfit. And this picture should now show up in my database here. Like if I refresh it. Okay, now there's a fourth Im There's a fourth one. So it did actually add one. All right, so I finished the first feature, which is adding all the saved IDs. And I'm gonna work on the second one, which is being able to store all my like outfits in a gallery so I can see them all. So I'll have to probably add a way on the main screen to like the images and then another page where I can show all the liked pictures. All right, so let's do that next. I'm getting a little bit hungry and tired, so I might head to the cafe after I do this, but yeah. What do you say? We call it a night and get some beauty sleep. You go. I want to review my notes one more time. Now I'm on to feature number two, which is adding a like button and a gallery so I can save my favorite outfits. To make this work, I need to update my Supabase database. Since I already have a table called generated outfits, all I need to do is add a new column to that table called is liked. It's a Boolean column, which means it can only be true or false. True means that I like the outfit and false means I didn't. Now I'm gonna connect this to the front end. Under each outfit image, I added a little checkbox. When I click that button, some React logic will run. And now I'll have a dedicated library that shows my favorite generated outfits. All right, so I just finished the second feature here where I add all my liked outfits to a gallery and let me show you, it looks really cute. Okay, I just generated a really cute Harry Potter outfit. I think they put me in Slytherin, but that's not accurate. It would definitely be in Hufflepuff. So we have the tabs up here have changed. Now they do something. And this is the gallery. It shows all the liked outfits that I chose. So let's create this black and denim one and I'll show you how it looks. Okay, so we have this. So let's put on the black shirt. Now I added this pop-up where it says, you've already worn this before. And then you can like or unlike this outfit. So if I unlike it, it should be removed from the gallery. Yeah, it's gone. All right, I already talked about it a few times, but I'm using the Windows 98 library to make it look like an old Windows browser. The website documentation is super easy to read and they have like a little code example. So let me show you. So basically I wanna add another tab so I can have a gallery and show all the outfits that I've worn and like. So I can just take this code cause I really like how this looks and paste it into my code editor. I don't know if this is like the best way to display it. I'll have to figure that out. I do need some help with the UI if you can see like look the borders here don't 
work. So it doesn't really scale well. I will need to figure that out. So as you can tell, I'm not paid to do much front end because you know, that's what happens. I can't scale it if the browser is bigger. If you wanna help me out with that, you can. My repo is in the description. I'm really happy with the gallery. I feel like it looked really cute. I don't really love how the tabs look, but I think I can fix that. All right, I can't believe I've already finished two of the features and I only have one left, which is to add the shopping functionality. That should be a bit interesting. I don't know how I'm gonna go about it, but it'll be a very useful tool for an online shopping addict like me. All right, so I'm gonna be heading it to a cafe soon to work on that last section, but before that, I'm gonna be giving you a desk tour. Wow, huh? it is cool, my own space. Hey, why don't we take a little tour of the place, okay? Great. One of my most popular videos on my channel is a desk makeover video that I posted over a year ago and I turned my purple bedroom into what it is right now. And since that video, I have a few updates so I wanna show you. So for starters, this desk is a flexi spot standing desk. I really like it, but I don't actually get much use out of the standing feature to be honest. I get questions on how big it is. I think it's 55 inches wide. This is a bamboo tabletop, which I really like. And a really important thing for any desk setup is having really cool lighting and and I have a lot of light features on my desk. And the most important one is this monitor backlight. And this one's from Govi, and I'll link everything down below to check out, but you can change the colors of it. And if you're doing a desk makeover, I feel like this is like the one thing you need. And other lighting, I have this lava lamp. It takes maybe like an hour to heat up and get it moving, but I love looking at it. It's like the perfect thing to add to my desk. Hanging on my Ikea lamp is my Nothing headphones. These Nothing headphones have a very cool design. They're a clear interior, so you can see that inside of the headphone system. I really like them. They are kind of a statement piece and they're almost like an accessory itself. I would say the audio quality is pretty good, but they're a little uncomfortable because they're just squeeze your head really tight. I get a ton of questions on my keyboard. This one is the Keychron K2 keyboard, I believe. It has magnetic switches. It sounds really nice and I do love the colors on it and I feel like the design of it also matches with my room aesthetic really well. I also have a Logitech MX Master mouse. This one is very popular. I see it, a lot of people use it. You can customize all the buttons for it. The only problem is I don't like that it's black. It doesn't really go with the rest of my room. They do actually have a white one. I just recently found out, so maybe I'll have to switch it out and get a new one. I almost forgot to talk about my monitor. This is the Samsung M8 monitor in 32 inches wide. It also is a smart TV and like use it to watch YouTube. I felt like most of the monitors on the market did not look cute and I wanted something more minimal and sleek and match my room. And I got it for $300 on Facebook Marketplace, which was such a steal. Over here, I have a laptop stand, which also doubles as a stand for my iPad. It has magnets, so it secures it on pretty well. And this is the iPad Pro with an M2 chip. I really like it. It's got an OLED screen, so the blacks are very crispy. All the colors are really nice. And I also have the pen that goes with it. It has my name on it. I really like this for taking notes, doing little doodles or sketches. For my personal computer, I have the Apple M4 Mac Mini. This is actually something I got because it was such a good deal you couldn't really pass up. This was under $700 for the Apple student discount. 256 gigabytes of storage and 16 gigabytes of RAM. I have to supplement the storage because there's not much storage and I just buy these NVMEs off of Amazon which I plug into my Mac mini and I've got like four extra terabytes of storage. It's really powerful. It handles all my work. I also code and do all my personal projects using it. I really like it but I'm looking for more of a portable option so I can bring it around when I travel. So I'm looking to buy a MacBook that's similar to my work laptop. I'm gonna head to a cafe before it closes to get more of the online web scraping feature of my app done. What are you doing? Your shoes are gone. <gasps> Let me uh, get you a towel. I forgot the photo, I need caffeine. Okay, I'm finally at the cafe. Thankfully, it didn't close even though I spent so long debugging. And now I finally get to work on the online shopping feature of the app. I'm going to try the web scraping method first to implement this. Web scraping is a way to automatically pull information from a web page like product images, titles, and prices. So the idea is to scan through the HTML and look for images of clothing with a plain background and then send that data back to the app. This process is honestly not going as smoothly as I thought. On some clothing websites like Aritzia, I can 
can't see any of the images. Most clothing sites will block you unless you go through a proper back-end scraper or you have the right course permission set up. I remember there's probably a way around it, so maybe I'll revisit this in the future, but for now, I'm gonna switch to a simpler screenshot approach. Just when I thought everything was finally working smoothly, all the buttons stopped working. I literally cannot generate any images now. It's getting pretty late too and I think I'm gonna lose my mind. I honestly need to lock in and figure this out because if I don't fix it tonight, I'm gonna lie awake thinking about it. At first, I wondered if somehow I ran out of money and I wasn't able to make any more API calls, but that doesn't really make sense because each call only costs a few cents. The other possibility is something in my code changed when I was trying to fix the outfit transfer button or maybe some shared logic broke, I really don't know. What's weird is that in the Google API dashboard, the metrics aren't even showing an incoming request. So it means that the API call isn't failing, it's not even happening. The issue is somewhere before the request even gets sent out. So now I have to dig through everything and figure out where it's breaking. Okay, a lot of the changes I made just stopped stop working and I'm not really sure how to figure it out. So I think I'm just going to call it a day today. It's pretty frustrating. For me, the most frustrating part of coding is when something that used to work suddenly stops working for no obvious reason. This outfit transfer feature was working perfectly in my last video and now nothing shows up when I press the button. And I don't think anything changed on my end. It's the same code and somehow it just broke. I'm pretty sure this app is still making the Nano Banana API call because the other buttons that use the same logic still work. The only thing is that I'm using a different prompt. So I guess the instructions I'm giving Nano Banana aren't clear enough anymore. So to actually figure out what's going on, I'm going to add some logging. Adding logs basically means sprinkling in little print messages throughout your code so you can watch what's happening in your code while the app runs. When you run your app and open the console, you can see all your logged messages and it's showing exactly what your app did before it started failing. Honestly, for me, coding feels like 50% actually building cool features, 50% figuring out why it suddenly broke. I'm going to try to keep fixing this and see what happens. All right, so I decided to keep coding and push through the pain. I figured it out. This was actually such a nightmare. I found out after asking ChatGPT that the model that I was using Gemini 2.5 flash image is no longer in use. I think because it's a preview version, they disabled it. So I just needed to regenerate the API key. That was such a nightmare. Like I thought that I had broken something because I've been adding new features. So I reverted all my code to a stable version. It still didn't seem stable because it wasn't generating images because the model is not in use anymore. And today I don't know what happened. It's just a coincidence that the model stopped working today, but everything is good now. So I'll keep working on feature number three, which is to add the online shopping component. I have to finish problems or else I'll, I'll think about it all night, to be honest. This online shopping feature will be really helpful for me because I'm a little shopaholic. So what I'm going to do is go online shopping, look for some clothes that I want to buy, try it on, and then actually buy them in real life and see what they look like on me and see if it was accurate to the AI version. All right, it's the next day and I'm going to test out the online shopping feature. I'm going to my favorite clothing websites to buy clothes clothes. I'm going to look for a fuzzy sweater, a leather jacket, and a fur jacket. And then I'm going to try it on and order it and then try it on in real life. So I've really been wanting a cozy sweater and I like this brown one from Gap. So this is what I'll do with my app. You can press try on top and then it will ask you to share your window and then you can share the screen. Then it will ask you to capture the frame, which is to take a picture of it. You can actually try on this sweater with all the clothes that you have in your wardrobe already. I want to try it on with a new pair of jeans that I have, like these jeans. I can just try it on. Press select. Oh, that actually looks really good. I love it. I love the fur jacket. And you know what? This fur jacket is also reversible, so I can get two wears out of it. All right, so I ordered all the clothes. Let's try them on. All my clothes came in the mail, so let's try it on. The first thing I have is this fur jacket. Let me put it on. It's so cute. I feel like mm, a bear. Roar. And look what it looks like on me. This is my AI wearing it. 
think it looks pretty close. Okay, let's try on some more stuff. I also got this sweater. This one's from Gap and I love how it looks. It's got like a very cute fair isle print on it. I wish I could knit something like this. Maybe that'll be my next project, but let's see it on my AI. Look at my sweater. I love it. I think it's good. Thanks for watching this code with me. If you want to help out, check out my repo in the description and also try out graphite today. Make sure you subscribe and follow me on Instagram at Sarah Lee MP3. Bye.